I've devoured it. I read every word. I loved it. I, I mean, I love like a good sort of like business story memoir, but this, there's so many of them are by men. Like this was just so great. I just loved it. And, um, it was awesome. It was That's awesome. So, so I can't wait yeah. to talk about it. <laughs> well, it's funny because I didn't know when I wrote this book that there really aren't women's books like this. Like it's typically women who are no longer CEOs anymore or something horrible happened with their company. You know, like there's, there's like a horrible story versus saying like, yeah, I had some crap that went on, you know, in, in the midst of it. But at the end of the day, if you want to succeed and you want to move forward and you want to learn you know, some lessons. And, and also, I mean, it's funny because so many people have said who have known me didn't even know I was going through some of those things. And I said, you know, it's interesting, like, it's not like when you're trying to, when you bet your company on, you know, like your, your life, like you've now just made this deal. Like, I think it's more likely that people sort of go into hibernation. Do you know what I'm saying? And like, they don't want to, talk about it. Like they don't want to, you know, sort of like have a lot of these conversations and then they're like, okay, I've just got to resurface and like deal with some of the stuff. But even John Legend, who's one of our investors said, you know, there were so many things in here that just kind of like, I just like have more respect for you just saying like, you know, you were trying and you were busy, but we all knew that you were busy, but we just had no idea some of the stuff that you were really dealing with along the way. And, and that is really my hope for this book too, not just to explain myself, but also to share with people that, you know, if I can do it, you can do it too. And, you know, and again, it's like, it's really about, it's pretty great when it just got the Wall Street Journal bestsellers list too. Yay! So yeah, I know. And so, and especially like everybody was saying to me, don't count on any of those because during this time you're not doing big book talks, you know, you're not doing um, like it's an election, you know, like there, there's a million reasons why it wasn't going to be able to, you know, get it. And then it, it like got number seven. And so I was like, oh my God, it's like, it's crazy. So I'm really, really excited. Well, it, you deserve it. It's a great book. And seriously, it's, um, you wrote it in such a, it's like a, it's a narrative, right? Like it feels like you're watching a movie about it. Like you're telling it as it comes, but then you have these little tips and full, you know, called out, but it's, uh, you know, and it's not so much about like balancing your life and your work and, you know, how to, you know, it's like literally the story of building a business, which I find fascinating. I went to business school. I mean, I just like love entrepreneurial stuff in general, personally. So yeah. when I hear about some of the things and some of the times you had to regroup, like with Hint Water for like when you started out and the, there was the mold in the water yeah. and, you did, and you had to figure out like what to do about it. And like when you were, you know, having your C-section and having to like load up the, oh gosh. Sorry. He's so cute. I'm, I'm so admiring sorry. him in the background. No, oh I'm my gosh. I'm so sorry. Um, how you had to like load up the Jeep and you like refused to stay home and you were like sneaking out of the house to work. It's awesome. <laughs> no, I, I like, and I still laugh about that. Like I, we lived right across when we lived in San Francisco, we live in Marin County now, but when we lived in San Francisco, my, we had this private school right across the street from us. And it was a, a it's called town school. It was all boys. And I knew a bunch of those mothers who were dropping their kids off. And so I knew that their drop off was at eight fifteen. And so literally in the beginning, I would go over there with like bottles. I'd be like, Oh my God, I have to get across the street to like get to the drop off because I'm going to give them a bottle and see what they think of this flavor. And people were like, uh, okay. And, and I said, because they won't expect it and you'll hand it to them and I'll be like, give me your honest opinion. Eh, yeah. Oh my God, this is amazing. And the more that I got of this is amazing, then I would be like, okay, like let's move forward with it. And people and entrepreneurs laugh at that because they're like, oh my God. And the mold story too. Like I said, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, we had this um, lab that in South San Francisco that called Anresco that I used to like drive down there and it's not in a great neighborhood. It's in like the Bayview neighborhood. And so my husband would like never let me go by myself and my, I'd lock my doors and like, I'd never bring my kids in the car and I would drive really fast and like a little scared. And then I'd like drop off these samples just to make sure that there wasn't like botulism or like, we never wanted to kill anybody. We were like, which is you know, nice. <laughs> but I always meet entrepreneurs. Like I said, 
you know, especially in food and beverages, like it's amazing how many people do not like take those steps. I said, I like, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I knew, you know, like, don't like there was definitely mold, but we were testing it. I mean, it was like, you know, there's right. mold and cheese and kombucha and like, there's right. lots of stuff, but it, you have to make sure that it's not the bad stuff that's going to kill you kind of. So, um, but and, again, how and how your husband would drink it in front of your buyers to be like, no, no, I'm good. Like, look at me, drink it. I'm like, I like the, the dedication of the two of you and like the I fact know. that you could do it together, all of I it. Know. And we're still laughing. I mean, we still like laugh. Like people have said over the years when I've been out, you know, public speaking on this too, people are like, and he's like a, he's from Scarsdale. He's like a Seinfeld episode. I mean, when he doesn't, I mean, he talks, but he's typically not the one like speaking on the brand, but a couple of times the two of us have been together and like talking and, you know, he's always like, you know, they're like, what's it like to work for your wife? And, and I remember when Inc asked me the first time on this panel, I was like, oh my God, you know, like, <laughs> is this really, where is this going to go? And he was like, don't we all like work for women? Like at the end of the day, like, you know, he was like, I have two daughters. Like if they're not happy, I'm not happy. Like, and he, I mean, like he'll say these things, you know, somewhat tongue in cheek, but he, he's pretty serious about it. He was like, look, like we have 60% women in our company right now. Now, like Kara always says, it's because like the guys don't want to work for women. She might be right. Like, you know, like the people don't show up for the interviews because they're like, oh, I don't want to work for a female founded company. And I'm like, good. Like, don't like don't apply for the job. Like, I, I'd rather you not show up. Right. And, and apply for this stuff. And he's always like, yeah, but then it leaves like the cool guys here that actually like want to work with women and like they enjoy like the thought process and whatever. I just, I, he's, he's hysterical. I mean, he, he just like makes me laugh every single day, but that was the other thing, you know, just in building, you know, the, like he did a lot of the editing on the book too. And I mean, it's, it's funny because I mean, he was just this awesome and still is an awesome intellectual property lawyer in Silicon Valley. Like all of his friends were like, what are you doing? And he was like, okay, so Kara is writing $50,000, $100,000 checks off our bank account. Like it's water. And like, it is water. Like she's just like, and she can spend money like I've never seen in my life. Like she'll just like, and she made money, but still like, he's like, I don't want to go bankrupt like over this like whole project. So he was like, I got to like stay close to this and really understand where she's going with this. Anyway, he's so funny. And now like, you know, he's, he is, I mean, he was the general counsel, he's the chief operating officer, but you know, he, I, he always says like, I can always go back to being a lawyer if I really want to. Like I, you know, he, he realized that he didn't like law and he, you know, he loves like the operation side. He loves like, you know, the science side of things and, and like really, I mean, he's automated our whole like supply chain and, um, where like we don't have any people in the room when the bottles are being filled. Like that was a four year project for him that, you know, again, like he just said, like that's where when we don't have any like preservatives in our product, that's where, you know, stuff actually like happens. That's where like bacteria happens. And so he was like working on this project. And as of December of 2019, he like got all the people out of the room. And like, again, like, I, I would like look at that saying, okay, well, that sounds good, but I'm not going to work on it. Like you can go work on it. And he went and did it. And now like with the pandemic, I mean, you know, when the FDA was running around to plants trying to figure out like where was COVID in the food supply and the drink supply. I mean, we were so happy that we had done so much work around automation and like, that's totally, that's the way his brain thinks about things. So while he's like excited to be you know, working for a beverage company, like I, I'm just like, he does like so much other stuff that is like so important, but so like way beyond what like a Coke or a Pepsi or, and he loves what he does. And, you know, and, and so you can't, you know, discount that at all. But I think that's something that comes through for both of you and how you keep innovating, right? One of the parts of the book that stayed with me the most is when you approached somebody who was like high up in your company at the time and you were like, you're doing a good job. You must be bored. 
like time to change, change it up. Let's go. And he was like, what? (laughs) And you're like, aren't you bored? You've mastered your job. If you've mastered your job, it means it's time to step up and do something else. And in so many, that's just like, so sort of anathema, like it's like, people don't view it that way. Like I got good at this. I'm going to stay good at this. And you're like, no, no, like what else can you do? And even you saying that, like, you don't want to be bored and you want to keep innovating. It's, it's, uh, that's how all the great stuff happens. Yeah. And I think like, that's the thing. Like when you, when you even talk to like, I mean, we just developed a hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. I don't know if we sent you any. I, you didn't send me any of this. I went online and like, and like bought out your website after reading this book. I was like, I have to try everything that they make. Yes. I have all the hand sanitizers. I have the deodorant. I have the sun, sun lotion. I, I got everything to try it all. It was so funny because the hand sanitizer, I just kept like smelling all this hand sanitizer in the beginning. And first of all, it was like really hard to get. And then um, in the beginning of the pandemic, and then I started smelling stuff that just like smelled rancid. And it ended up that a lot of it was, you know, there was a lot of stuff that was recalled. And anyway, and so I just started thinking like, God, there has to be, you know, some better ones out there. And and so finally one day, uh, I guess this was like the beginning of May, a girlfriend and I were hiking and she lives up in Sonoma and she knew this whiskey brand that was, um, that was like really struggling and they were, you know, doing hand sanitizers. And she's like, she's like, maybe you guys want to do a hand sanitizer. And so she's like, can you just talk to them and like talk to them about maybe some ideas around direct to consumer and whatever. So I got talking and I kind of did it like, as just like a favor to them, like to sort of help them. And then all of a sudden, like now we're almost sold out of the product. We're like trying to figure out how to make more of it. But again, like people were so surprised that the CEO was jumping in on it. And I was like, no, 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 it's like really, I don't want to like bog the rest of my team down on this stuff. And then selfishly, like that's the stuff that I love to do. Like I love getting, you know, scrappy and like roll up my sleeves and, you know, and, and try and figure out, could this actually be a big business? And so it's a lot of what I speak at, you know, on that topic, even on college campuses. Like I used to think that, you know, becoming a manager and then you just become like the important thing was really like getting a bigger title. And now the more that I talk to CEOs, they're like, oh yeah, I got this little project here. And it's like, it's like super fun. And, and like, it's like this, you know, bit like d- don't tell anybody it's like the secret, but it's the best thing I do in the company. And sometimes it's been like philanthropy or sometimes it's been right. Like it's, it's other stuff. But I think like the more you can do these little things where you are learning, right? That that's the other thing that I've, you know, realized about really smart people that the Mecca is not being this boring, like, you know, CEO that is just like sitting here looking at a spreadsheet and watching the numbers. Instead, it's like, how do we innovate? How do we do other things? And, and so I think like that, you know, and that goes at every single level of the company that I've really tried to push on. It's like, what else can you be doing? Um, you know, that really gets your head kind of thinking about stuff. So um, I, I, I feel like I share that. Not that, I mean, I'm obviously on much a tinier, tinier scale here, but even with like this podcast, I, you know, I've like, I've been doing it now for almost three years. So like, I know how to do it. Right. And yeah. I like, and I love it. I love everything about it. But recently I started like another thing called moms don't have time to lose weight. And I'm like, I'm cheating on my company. I'm cheating on like my number one priority by like yeah. doing this thing on the side. Like here's my other Instagram account. But <laughs> <laughs> it's so no. silly, but I'm like, well, let's try this and let's try that. And I'm always like, I like love trying new stuff. Cause I'm like, well, I don't know. Okay. Well, looks like that's not working. Like, let's go with something else. And I love that, that it's like yeah. the tinkering and experimenting and um, finding out what people respond to. Right. It's so fun. Yeah. And I think like, that's, that's so true. And I mean, it's funny, I've spoken on so many college campuses and business school classes about this. And I think I sort of like disrupt like the learning a little bit. Like I was speaking to a whole group of engineers at Berkeley and I'm like, look, if you want to be like Mark Zuckerberg or like, you know, it's not going to happen if you don't actually go and take classes outside or like, or try and figure out like, what other people do, like always be learning. It's not just about like, it's not a linear thing to, and the goal isn't to like get to the top of the heap and then manage a bunch of people. Yes, you'll do that. But then, you know, can you go horizontally? 
And can you actually like come back with creative ideas? Can you actually like understand like, you know, a basic business plan? Can you understand, you know, these different things along the way horizontally? And that to me is like, the key to the kingdom because it keeps you like energized. It keeps you learning and it's, um, and you know, that guy is still at hint. And I think, you know, I think I point to him all the time as one of our best managers, but he's also like, you know, he's gunning for my husband's job. Like, you know, I mean, (laughs) he, he is, which is great. Right. And he keeps taking more and more off of his plate and which is like, and you know, and eventually like, you know, if it's not at him, he'll go somewhere else, like, and go be like an amazing operating officer. Cause he's done exactly that. Like he knows enough to get him in trouble and all these different, and you get it. I mean, like people talk about this at, you know, business school and a lot of these learnings are there, but it's, um, it's not, it's clearly not how we're teaching people in, in regular, like college campuses today. It's not what we're teaching people. Like if you're a manager, you're like, you're great with people, you know your stuff, and then you could teach people. But I'm like, okay, but what about like that person? Like, because there's so many people who just get like angry at their company or they get depressed or whatever. And I really think it has a lot to do with the fact that they're no longer learning. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I think, you know, it's like the spice of life, right, too. I, I, I mean, I think it's, you know, with marriage, too, and, and with, you know, like your personal life. If it's like the same, it's part of the reason why I think COVID is so hard for people. It's like the, you got to switch it up. Like you got to go find new hiking trails. You got to get out of town every once in a while. Like you got to, you know, do things that are going to like, it, like allow your brain to sort of like create and, and have new. So I think that's sort of an under... Um, under-discussed contributing factor to depression. I think wow. learn it. people don't talk about how much we crave learning. And like, I used to always say like, oh, I like miss school. I miss, like, I loved, yeah. I really loved no, school. No, exactly. Nerd, but like, I really loved it. And I loved like all the stuff I was learning. And when I got into the real world, like I felt very um, like rootless. Like, you know, where is the structure? Where is the, what am I building if I'm just like showing up at work? So anyway, I totally agree with you not to, um, so yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, it really, it really is. So, um, so what, so do you, should we just continue on this or do you want to ask me specifically like about stuff? Yes. Let them? me, well, yeah. Let me just tell, ask you a little bit more about your book and what, so what made you decide to take all your experience and turn it into a book? First of all, yeah. like why, so, why a book and why now? Why did you do it now? Yeah. So, uh, so it's crazy. I, um, you know, I was out speaking about founding Hint, like over the years at lots and lots of events. And then about four years ago, I started journaling and I was like, and I was primarily doing it because I felt like I would tell these stories at, you know, when I was out speaking and then, um, and then I, I kind of wanted to hone them in and, and like also think about, okay, if somebody talks about like, how do you get started? Then I would like have, you know, what are the three stories that come to mind that are, you know, good examples of that. And then, um, and then I just kept going. Like every time somebody would ask me something kind of hard, like I would think about, okay, here's my examples that I can go back to or whatever. And then, um, and then I started really hearing more and more from, um, from people, not just in audiences, but also like they'd write to me on LinkedIn and saying, things are really hard. I can't raise money. I can't like, I have so many doubts. This is so much not like you. I'm sure you've never had any fears or failures. You're relentless. You're this, you're this. And I'm like, no, like I, I totally had lots of, you know, examples of, you know, I am not like I move forward, but I also like have doubts and I have doubters, you know, et cetera. So anyway, the, the journal was like 600 pages about a year and a half ago. And I finally started, I have friends that are authors and I was like, maybe I should like put this in a book because I could actually help a lot more people who are Um, you know, who are like feeling this way that maybe aren't going to reach out to me or who aren't in an audience, like hearing me talk about this. And, um, and so I went, you know, I got an agent and then the agent 
like was like this is going to take a long time to you know these these like publishers are going to want you to write a certain book and there was definitely that but um but it got sold in like two weeks i mean it was like really unusual and and, and i think like primarily because i didn't know how to write a book i wasn't like this person saying like one day I'm going to be an author. Like, I'm not going to lie. It feels pretty great to like have a published book and be an author and Wall Street Journal bestseller and all that stuff. But I like did it differently than most people. Like, and I think today so many people are journaling too and kind of trying to feel like, how do I find happiness and how do I, you know, how do I be a better leader or whatever it is? And they're writing, but they're not really thinking, they don't know where this goes. And, and so I think like, that's another thing that I like to share with people is like, you know, I think that it, this book, my hope is that people will, you know, read it and be inspired and kind of put it into their own kind of, you know, journey, their own storyline to figure out like where it fits. And, you know, even Jamie Dimon, who's kind of been a mentor to me over the years. I mean, it's funny, he read the book and um, and he said, your story in the Grand Canyon like really got me kind of thinking about like, what are those really hard things in business that I faced where when I was facing something in my personal life that was super hard, you know, what did I like, what did I think about? And, and like, how did, how did I have the, you know, the relentlessness to just keep going on. And, and, you know, he had throat cancer. And so, and he talked about all of these challenging times that he had had in business and how he loves what he does and he loves his work. And, and, but he was, you know, really feeling like, you know, that was a challenging time for him. And so he was able to automatically set his mindset to think like, I got this, I can do this stuff. And, you know, and yes, of course he, you know, remembered his family and all of those things. But in addition, he remembered all of the hard stuff that he had been through as sort of lessons to be able to tackle other hard stuff. And I mean, I think it's fascinating that that's what he picked up on, you know, in the book. Like, it's like, it's people are, you know, incredibly smart people are picking up things and like placing it in their own life, um, which is helping, you know, helping them to kind of figure out like, what did that mean? And um, so again, I think, I think it's got, um, I'm excited because I wanted to get it out there. And, you know, like I said, it got picked up by a publisher pretty quickly. So I was like, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, but I, you know, I'll also realized like women don't really talk about this. And, you know, this clearly is not a book about, you know, how I was, you know, shunned in some way. There's moments in there, but I've also hopefully give people kind of hope to sort of say that, you know, there's people like them. Like I clearly had some tough, tough times. And, you know, also my kids are older now and, you know, they look at me and they're like, you know, my mom's a badass. Like, you know, she just like goes, she's crazy. She's still, you know, right in the middle of my launch and Sheryl Sandberg's interviewing me. My son's like texting me saying, can I get those shoes? Can I get those shoes? Like it's still, you know, a crazy town, right? And I'm like, stop it. Like, you know, like yelling. <laughs> right? Like that is, that's real and it never stops. Right. And, and, but that's okay. Like that, that stuff goes on. But I think people just think it's just, is this just my life or is this, you know, everyone's life. And so anyway, that, that was really um, why I decided to, to ultimately get it out there. That's great. I mean, it's a book I want to give to my daughters, right? Like not just my, you know, when they're older. I mean, one of my daughters is, is seven, but anyway, but it's a, it's an example. It's like, look, you can do all this and you don't have to write a book about things you're complaining about essentially. Right. I mean, I think a lot of books right now are things that are, um, I don't know what, what has worked against us as opposed to, yeah, these are things are hard, but I got through them and here's how you innovate. So I don't know. I thought that was really awesome. So once you sold the book, Tell me about the writing process. When did you ever find time to do this? Well, because I had really written so much of it, like it was a lot easier for a publisher to actually say, you know, 
let's do this part of the, of the book and all in these sections. And then I got this editor who's on um, the, you know, inside cover of the book, John Butnam. And then my husband actually, like he would remember other parts of the stories and stuff. And so he became sort of like the co-editor. What was so sad is that my publisher, we turned in everything at the end of um, January and um i mean it was pretty fast it was from like the end of june until the end of january we just like talked like four days a week like blocked like three hours four days a week we were like on it and we were just like he was sending me we just went back and forth on emails and i was doing weekends and nights and i was just like you know because i'm still the ceo of the company and so i'm still like trying to do both of the things and so um and then actually on march um March 13th. Um, do you know who Platon is? He's a photographer in New York and he shot the cover of the book and he had shot me for this um, Verizon commercial and I just loved him. On um, He shot like um, Kobe Bryant, that picture that was, you know, so powerful and he's done every president. He's just this amazing guy. And so of course the city was shutting down, you know, when all this was going on. And I said, like, are you going to cancel on me on this photo shoot? And he's like, no, 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 like, let's just do it. And then let's both get out of here. And, <laughs> and, uh, and so that's what happened. And then I got the pictures back that weekend while like we were out of stock on shelves everywhere. I mean, it was just, there were a lot of, there was a lot going on at this time. And uh, I remember talking to John on that Monday um, saying, what do you think about the cover? And like, in the meantime, we're trying to figure out, do we close down our San Francisco office? We shot, we already shot uh, or, or closed down our New York office. And, um, and so he was like, oh my God, I love the cover. We put a period on the end of Undaunted. Like, he was like, I love it. It's exactly how you talk. Like, you know, it's it, all of the stuff. And then, um, and then I get a phone call from my agent um, and a few days later, and he's, she's like, I have something critical to tell you. And I thought, oh God, like what else is critical like going on in the world? And she's like, John died. What? And so I know. And so I was like, what? I mean, this is somebody that I talked to more than my husband. Like, I mean, for the last like six months, like I was just, I like, we were constantly, and, um, and he had a massive heart attack. No. And I know. And it was so sad. And it was just, he had just bought a house in Portland, Maine. He was like, you know, super healthy. I mean, he's 65 years old, but I mean, I'm, con I'm convinced that like COVID is, you know, we'll find out years later that you know, he didn't like have it that he knew of, but, um, but anyway, it was really, really sad. So, so I hadn't gotten my manuscript back from the publisher, but I think in many ways, like, because I had time sitting at home and was able to kind of, you know, dig through it. And John did such an amazing job to really get it kind of where it needed to be. Um, you know, like there wasn't that much editing even that was needed, but so it was, you know, again, like it was just, I think, you know, John in many ways, like I felt like through the process of like getting it out there, like I could just feel his presence, you know, as like crazy as that was, like you got this, like, you know, it's it's gonna get out there. So anyway, it was just, it, it was very, very sad though. So along oh the way. Gosh, I'm so I sorry know, that that happened. I know, I know, Terrible. and oh really, my gosh. really sad, so. Um, do you have any advice for, aspiring entrepreneurs and aspiring authors, because now you're, you know, now you're both, you can, you know, show that. Yeah. Off. <laughs> well, I think like the, the main thing that I've, I've sort of, um, you know, signed up for uh, over the years that wasn't as clear to me, um, maybe earlier on in life is that if you don't try, then you actually won't succeed. Right. And so I always share with people that, like no idea is crazy, especially if you just keep thinking about it. Like, you know, if you keep thinking, oh gosh, I should go write a book or I want to launch this company. Like you can just take baby steps to actually go and do the, these things. Like people are like, I don't know how to write a business plan. I'm like, you just Google like business plan and you can start to figure this stuff out. It might not be the best business plan in the whole world, but you know, stop, you know, putting 
these walls up in front of yourself that actually prevent you from moving forward. Cause I think that that's the biggest thing. And, and frankly, that's the biggest thing that I find for entrepreneurs is that, you know, they, they think, Oh, I haven't worked in a couple of years. I've never worked in that industry. I've like, you know, didn't go to the right school or business school or whatever it is. I'm like, just go, just go try. And if nothing else, you can actually say, well, I thought about it. I looked at the industry. I wrote a business plan. I talked to some people and like, that's actually succeeding, right? Like that's doing something like you got a little bit further than you were, you know, six months ago or whatever it is. So I think that's my biggest advice to people. Like when you, you know, look at successful people today, they didn't have all the answers. They, you know, they actually had a lot of failures. They had a lot of doubts and you just have to go and just take these little steps and figure out, you know, what are those steps that I can go even figure out what, whether or not this is, you know, worth doing. And, you know, that's really, and, and really just live your life undaunted. Cause if you do that, you know, I do believe too, that while it can be stressful at times, it's also, you know, really rewarding. I mean, today we're the, you know, largest non-alcoholic um, uh, beverage company, private beverage company in the world that doesn't have a relationship with Coke, Pepsi, or Dr. Pepper Snapple. Like that was never supposed to happen. Like I didn't have the experience. I did, you know, I was just like this mom with four kids under the age of six, like walking into Whole Foods. Like I was just like, you know, driving in my Jeep Grand Cherokee, you know, it was just like none of this was supposed to happen, but I just kept trying and I was, you know, getting educated and I was really intrigued by, you know, the fact that I originally, I thought these little things were caps and they're actually called closures. And I was like, that's so cool. Like there's this whole like secret hidden vocabulary out there for like these things. And I don't know why I like geeked out on the fact that those were, you know, the things, but, um, but again, I think it's, um, if you, you have to get confident in yourself that you can, you know, go and accomplish a lot. And most people actually can do a lot more than they allow themselves to do. And, and again, if you don't want to do something, that's a whole other topic, but I think it's really like, do you want to get up and actually move forward? And that's the biggest question that I think people need to answer. Wow. Well, I feel less daunted, maybe, maybe not yes. as, but well, uh, you are definitely, and you're less doing daunted. Lots of amazing stuff too. Oh, and, thank you. Yeah. Um, because well, I feel like your book is so inspiring and, um, it's just so important. And I think that entrepreneurship right now is sort of the greatest thing we have left in this country. And, um, you know, during this pandemic, watching people innovate has been the most sort of encouraging thing that's happened. And, you know, with your hand sanitizer and like, there's this company that sent me all these things. What were they called? Something like, um, uh, Senti's, like scented mask. Like you should actually talk to this company. Maybe you should talk to this girl. It's just like this random entrepreneur who, um, she's making scented masks and so like, fun. All, like all these little things. Um, that's what it's all about. That's how our country can really get better. So anyway, um, I feel like I could, you know, talk to you all day and ask you a million other questions, but I'm so glad to have met you, to have read your book. Um, now I'm drinking all this extra water, <laughs> which Yay! is amazing. And getting, and getting um, super healthy. I love getting it. Getting super healthy. So, um, so thank you so much for our very informal chat today. And, um, I hope to stay in touch. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I love it. And uh, if anybody wants to reach out to me too, I'm on social at Kara Golden. And, and again, the book is Undaunted, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. And um, it'd make a great holiday gift too. I've, I've been talking to a lot of people who are uh, talk, reaching out to me saying, how do I buy like 50 of these? Like, this is like, I need, I know a lot of girlfriends or, um, or, uh, high school kids or <laughs> college kids that that need this book, so it's very uh, applicable. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. No, not at all. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Not at all. Perfect holiday gift. I'm holding it up now. So um, anyway, all right. Well, thank you, and um, and stay in touch. Yeah. Have a, great, have a great rest of the week. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.